Hello and welcome back to From the Workshop with me, your host, Brandon Hart. We are here in the Nimblelink, uh, somewhat nerdy, kind of larish, new set for From the Workshop. This particular episode, I thought we would bring in one of our old friends, one of our previous co-hosts of the uh, series. Co-host? That's right, right. yes. Uh, Promotion. Mr. Thaddeus. Thaddeus, introduce yourself to the fine people. My name's Thaddeus Golden. I'm an antenna and RF engineer with Tau Glass based out of our Minneapolis office. Excellent. And we brought you in for a very specific reason. Uh, we get a question a lot of times from our customers and from folks we talk to who are using these devices, uh, LTE devices typically in an IoT uh, use case, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out, do I need two antennas? I mean, you, you tell me I need two antennas, but I don't need two antennas, right? Uh, yes, the age-old diversity antenna question. Right. So let's discuss antenna diversity. Let's do it. So Thaddeus, when we're talking about LTE devices, uh, a lot of times these LTE devices come with multiple antenna connectors on them, uh, either on on the board in case of a Skywire modem, or you know as these SMA uh, mm -hmm. adapters that may come out of an enclosure or things like that. Uh, I gotta ask, not all of them have that. Some of them only have one. And if those devices seem to work okay, then why do I really need to? I mean. It calls it a diversity. It calls it a secondary. It's it, it's not as important, right? I mean, wh what is received diversity in the first place? So you can think of received diversity like being able to listen out of both ears. Okay. So so in your your single antenna analogy here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> whisper at me. I can't hear you. Really. <laughs> now now if you were to whisper in this ear, uh -huh. not close. I would be be able to hear you fine. Right. The point is, having two ears pointed in different directions okay. helps you hear more. So there's a there's a reason why ears aren't both on one side, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so basically, what the second antenna is doing is it's reaching into different parts of space than the first antenna, which allows for greater reliability in in sort of seeing the the tower. Um, not every, so antennas don't radiate in all directions. They mm -hmm. all have something called nulls, which are single directions about the center that uh, uh, will have very poor gain. The okay. way you get around that is having two antennas into two ports that have gain spread in different directions. So they cover each other's nulls. So they overlap mm -hmm. and cover those. Okay, yeah. all right, gotcha, gotcha. And that does two things. Uh -huh. It improves reliability from a you know directionality perspective. And it also actually increases throughput. Makes it faster. Yeah. Faster's good. Yeah, so so it uh, in the true diversity case, so you can say the, the LTE category one case, mm -hmm. uh, it adds more, we call it link budget, to the downlink. It okay. allows us to uh, uh, hear the signal a little bit louder, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, lets us use the magic of uh, LTE radios to uh, move data a little bit faster. Okay, so what you're saying is that if I have two antennas, um, it doesn't really change my transmit capability. Nope. What it does do is it helps me receive, it helps me hear better from the network uh, into my device. Now, that's all well and great, mm -hmm. um, but what if I I mean, what if I what if I'm close enough? What if it's you know I, I'm not in a bad area? You know, uh, in those situations, I'm not sending a lot of data, so the speed doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I, I can just put a single antenna on my Cat4 device in that case, right? Well, for a Cat4 device, that actually uses a technology called MIMO. Now, MIMO, MIMO, MIMO means multiple input, multiple output. <laughs> okay. Uh, in this case, we're we're talking specifically about multiple input for okay. the downlink. So so. In the CAT4 case, we actually have what's essentially two radios in one. We have two separate data streams going mm -hmm. through two separate sides of the radio okay. to put down twice as much data as you would with one, uh, one antenna. Now in the CAT1 case, uh, uh, we're doing something a little bit differently. We're, we're listening to the same data okay. through two antennas, 
which... Okay. And that's received diversity. That's received diversity. Okay, all right. But when we have the, the multiple data streams, it's MIMO. So uh, received <clears throat> diversity and MIMO, not the same thing. Not the same thing. And now th both of these, both these implementations, both the Cat1 and the Cat4 are, are flexible. And you could theoretically connect to the tower mm -hmm. with only one antenna. Okay. However, you're going to be limited in throughput. Okay. You're going to be limited in receiver sensitivity, uh -huh. which is basically, you know, how quiet of a signal can you feed it and still transmit data? Sure. Um, and uh, uh, you're you're just going to be overall less performant and less reliable. Okay. So it's going to be slower. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have a weak signal, maybe I'm far away from a tower or something like that. I'm going to have a harder time being able to receive that signal at all. Mm -hmm. um, in both cases, really. In both IMO cases, yeah. and receiver diversity. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so you mentioned there's a difference between Cat One and there and and uh, Cat Four and, mm -hmm. and and up with MIMO. Um, but I have heard, I have heard that you can use a single antenna with Cat One. And and you can. Okay. In fact, all LTE radios, you can, if if it is a transmit port. Uh huh you can use that port to do both uplink and downlink, and you will be able to communicate with the tower with just that one antenna. Okay. However, you're going to be severely restricted on the kind of throughput, mm -hmm. the kind of dynamic range, and the kind of reliability that you can achieve gotcha. with those radios if you don't have the full number of specified antennas. Well, how come I hear that you can do that with Cat1, but you can't do that with other types of LTE? I mean, the higher category LTE, uh, there's something about certification or, or something like that, that Cat1 allows you to do it, but the other ones don't? So so with respect to certifications, uh, the network providers, mm -hmm. uh, they basically tune their networks and their, their L, you know, the LTE radios that run on them. They tune that to using the full number of ports or in certain scenarios, in the case of, you know, Cat M, for example, mm -hmm. a single port, because that's all the, the category specification calls for. Okay, so it only call, it calls for one antenna, so therefore the network is only expecting there to be one antenna. Correct. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, and category one, mm -hmm. it's expecting two antennas, but you're still allowed to only use one? So, so you should always use the number of antennas recommended for that implementation. Which for category one is two. It's two. Two antennas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, so even though the certifications in some cases with special permission from the operators do, do allow you to use a single antenna, don't do it unless you absolutely positively have to. Correct. Fair? Correct. Fair. Fair. Okay, excellent. Um, so. Now I have to ask, um, what if I decide that I just don't want to buy two antennas? And so I'm only going to use one. I'm going to deploy my devices to the field. Seems to work fine in the lab, so it'll probably work fine in the field too. What am I likely to experience by only having that one antenna on there? Well, in the case of the lab versus the field, okay. uh, those are not equivalent environments. <laughs> Okay. So, so, so elaborate, there, there's a, a sort of a statistical effect that mm -hmm. happens with the large service areas associated with LTE. Mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be places that have much stronger signal than others. Uh, and there's going to be a very wide difference in dynamic range between the best spots and the worst spots. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you can't test all of those spots at once. The mm -hmm. lab is only giving you one place. Yeah. And that is not going to be representative. Okay. The best way to protect yourself against that unknown signal condition mm -hmm. that uh, your device is going to be deployed in is to use the full number of specified antennas because that is going to give you your maximum throughput, mm -hmm. your maximum dynamic range, and your mm -hmm. maximum sensitivity, okay. which is basically how far away from the tower you can be. Right, right. Okay. So if you want it to work everywhere, you're going to deploy it really need to have both antennas. Correct. If you want it to work at the speed that it's supposed to work at, you need to have both antennas. Correct. Use both antennas is what you're saying. Use both antennas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so when you're using two antennas, mm -hmm. um, there is a, uh, a requirement that the antennas actually be 
spaced some abstract number uh, away from the other antenna, right? It is, it's not really that important. I mean, you can you can cross, and it's not like Ghostbusters. It, you know, you can cross the don't the cross antennas. the streams. Uh, don't cross the streams. <laughs> so, so uh, what's up with what's up with the spacing between the antennas? Is that really important? Uh, it, it, it can be very important, actually, especially in the case of a proper MIMO. Okay. So, so what the well, every antenna has a couple of different field components. Okay. Okay. It's going to have a near field and a far field. Mm. The near field extends about uh, uh, one sixth of a wavelength out from the body of the antenna. So okay. for, for LTE, uh, that's going to be about, uh, uh, I think, uh, 30 millimeters, something like that, mm. 40 millimeters. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, basically, anything within that is mm -hmm. going to have a strong coupling at the, uh, the, the frequencies of operation for this antenna. Okay. Um, if you have two antennas mm -hmm. very close together, yeah. they're basically going to be functioning as one because they're so strongly coupled that they're just exchanging energy between one another and, and barely escaping mm. into the far field. So that overlap you were talking about earlier, yep. you're not really getting that. You're getting... Well, so 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 you're, you're getting strong coupling between the two, so uh -huh. they have basically the same gain characteristics, mm -hmm. and they're so strongly coupled that uh, the energy that's supposed to be going out into space mm -hmm. is just gonna be exchanged between the two antennas. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, there are a couple ways to combat against this. Okay. One is physical separation. Mm -hmm. You get them out of near field range mm -hmm. with each other. Um, the best recommendation is to get at least a quarter wavelength away, uh, if not substantially more. Okay. Obviously, in the case of small embedded devices, that's not necessarily feasible. Yeah, that's hard to do when you're operating at 700 megahertz LTE exactly. in a small embedded mm -hmm. device. So the other way we can handle this okay. is polarization. So basically, you like know, the sunglasses, uh, uh, similar. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically the direction of the electric field. Uh -huh. So for these two antennas to couple strong with one another, yeah. their electric fields, which usually is parallel to the length of the antenna, okay. uh, they have to be well aligned. Uh -huh. If they are out of phase with each other by 90 degrees, they won't couple. They won't couple. Nice. Now this breaks down if you get really, really close. Okay. But uh, you know you can get 20, 30, 40, 50 millimeters away mm. and still have pretty good uh, uh, isolation between the two. Got it. Um, in MIMO land, we, we call this, you know, the, the communication between these two antennas, the envelope correlation coefficient. They're the ECC. Sounds fancy. It's a fancy way of saying <laughs> that very uh, mathy. These, these two antennas yeah. uh, communicate with different parts of space. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and not with one another. Sure. Uh, and the lower the ECC you can get, the more independently the antennas are going to work for you. Interesting. Okay. So moral of the story then, if we had to wrap all of this up, mm -hmm. we'd say if your device supports two antennas, mm -hmm. use two antennas. Correct. Okay. Um, and really that applies to category, LTE category one and higher, mm -hmm. perhaps for different reasons as you go higher, but still it applies. Correct. Um, you want to make sure that you are separating the antennas. Of course, they need to be, you know, operating at the at the appropriate frequencies, et cetera. But mm -hmm. um, you also need to have the appropriate separation um, and polarization. Correct. Did I, did I get it? You got it. I got it. Excellent. I hope you all got it as well. So uh, just a ton of helpful information here when it comes to antennas. Um, we Again, we get this question a lot when it comes to receive diversity and second antennas. And if I can get away with it on Cat 1, why can't I get away with it on Cat 4? And uh, should I get away with it on Cat 1? Um, my LTE M radio isn't uh, working as well as I would like. So what if I just attach a second antenna to it? all sorts of stuff like this. Um, and so hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this explains a little bit more about why you need to use a secondary antenna. Uh, so thank you very much for the education. Have and uh, we would love it if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, leave them down in the comments below down there um, and or shoot us a message directly. You can shoot it to workshop at nimblelink.com. Um, like, subscribe, don't miss the next one, and we will see you then. And until then, 
Please have fun building with two antennas. Two antennas. Also, for more information about Tauglass's line of cellular antennas and other antennas, feel free to visit tauglass.com for more information.